Okay, good morning, Facebook. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> I hope everybody's having an awesome, awesome day. And you guys had a great week, right? Um, but welcome to Pips for Brunch with my Pip sister and I, Christy Amber. And today we got more heat for you. More real world heat, though, stuff you can actually use. <laughs> yeah. Happy Friday, everybody, right? Right. Some people so, are so glad it's the weekend. I have like mixed kinda feelings. Sad. Yes. I'm so sad that it's the weekend because like most of what we do happens during the week and we mm-hmm. like and love what we do. Right. Um, so when the weekend comes, it's like, now I got to figure out what to do. <laughs> but in today's podcast, we are going to answer the question, am I too old to start a business or start investing or am I too young? Yeah. Now, the weird thing is the answer to both of those questions is the same. Right. <laughs> it's not, your age is, does not matter. Um, not at all. And you know, it's funny, Christina. So we keep talking about how old I am, 48. But when I got started, I was in my 20s. And this is kind of like pre- really it's social media being that big of a deal right Mm -hmm. so you didn't have all the young kids on social media or the young adults on social media doing all this stuff and generating money there was no influencers and we were the marketing we did online was mostly um through like paid advertising and email and things like that Mm -hmm. and i would have people come up to me at events who were my what my age now right all like 50 or 60 and say oh i wish i would have you know, found online marketing when I was your age and I was only like 26, 27 years old. And they're like, oh, you're so young. Do we have so much success? And it's funny because now that's not even a thing. Like people know that young people are successful. In fact, I think it's gone the opposite direction where older people feel like that they're disconnected from social media, that they're, they're now too old, right? To get involved in a business because they see so much social media marketing and they're not like used to it or they don't know what to do if you will so it's just changed for my environment has changed from that where it's like oh you know young people don't usually do these things this early I wish I would have figured it out too oh now I'm too old because all the young people are successful oh did we lose did we lose you I think we lost Christina so I'm going to keep talking and (laughs) Hopefully we're still streaming live since she was the connection on it. looks like we're still live on Facebook. So yeah, when I started in the industry, I mean, I dabbled a little when I was 18, um, 19 years old, and I was going to all these real estate seminars and got involved in uh, New Skin, actually, which is still around today, a network marketing company, great products. And, but it wasn't really until I was 26 that I started getting involved um, in the, in, in like a very serious way. And, and I felt like I was usually like the youngest person on the team at that point in my life. Now we see, you know, 18 year olds getting involved. We, we see multi, you know, six figure and seven figure earners who are 18, 19 years old and, and younger. Right. And we can talk about that a little bit. Um, the younger, oh, there she is. Yeah. I, I, back. Okay. I, I think we were still streaming while you yep. were I'm okay, looking at cool. it now. So yeah, I was just talking talking to them about how things have shifted where now I think that young people don't feel that way as much anymore. In fact, young people sometimes, and young meaning for me now, because I'm almost 50, you know, people in their you know late teens, early 20s feel like they they know they can be successful or they feel mm-hmm. they they don't have. And yeah, this is true about young people across the generations. You have, haven't had that experience, as much experience getting the letdowns, right? So it's right. like you're open, you just go for it. It's like that ignorance on fire is better than, you know, um, all that knowledge on ice. And mm-hmm. so they just go for it, if you will. So that's changed a lot for, you know, what I was used to early on, you know, in my network marketing and home business career where people are like, I was always the youngest person at 26, 27 years old in the group. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, Christina, I were just talking about uh, who's that kid that, well, um, there's a bunch of them, but Ryan, mm-hmm. Ryan, like I like um, him because he's a great example 
of those who think that they're too young to start. He just started unboxing toys on YouTube and he hit six figures because you can monetize your social media. So when you say, am I too young? Eh, no such thing like at all, because there's a niche for everything. There's a target demographic for everything. Like for some strange reason, kids like to watch other kids open toys. Mm-hmm. And now his sister's on the channel with him. Really? Son, yeah, because my son used to watch Ryan. Yeah, his sister's on the channel with him. And we see Ryan on cereal boxes at Walmart. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So he got some brand deals out of it and everything. Yep. So you you can't, you can't never, never, ever, ever say that you're too young to do something. My son is 14 now. Um, he has a online store. He's also been investing in cryptocurrency. And I don't know if, if, if I was here for it. Did you give the disclaimer? I didn't. So go for it. Yes. This is important, right? If you are under 18 years of age or older, please, please, please talk to your parents about getting started and stuff like this. Um, because most of what we do, most of the things that you'll be doing to earn income, you will need to be 18 or older. Um, but my son has a cryptocurrency portfolio. He has an online store. And yep, I, as his parent, had to set up a lot of that stuff for him, but it's his. I don't touch his investments or anything like that. He gets advice and things like that, but he has his own streams of income. And that's perfectly okay, especially if it's something that you want to do. His friends, they play video games. So guess what's in his online store? Video game stuff, right? There's a target demographic for it. So if you're thinking like, I'm too young, no such thing at all. There is something for everybody. Like they don't put kids in commercials for no reason. Yeah, for sure. And then if you're having that issue, like, oh, I'm too too old to start a business. And I think that even like we should dive into the one that's even more that we hear, I'm too old to start investing. Yeah. I did like investing, like, cause we, you know, we do a lot of investing as well. And so it's like, I didn't say for retirement, you know, we all know the younger you start, right. The better, the, the better. Cause you don't have to put as much money aside yep. out of your checks and things like that, because it's compounding, it's compound interest. And the longer you have to compound for retirement, the better the issue is a lot of 18, 25, even 30 year olds aren't thinking about, they know they probably should, but they don't do it mm-hmm. when that's a prime time. Right. So they need, they need to meet a friend of ours, right? Pat Kenny, and he'll tell him at 25 what he's got going. So it's right. important to understand, though, it's never too late. No, like to inside start of our investing. team, we have, I think we have one person that's 72 on our team mm-hmm. inside of our mastermind, like 72 years young and learning to invest and seeing success because I am going to harp on this for a second partnerships we've Mm -hmm. she's partnered with a community full of other like-minded individuals when you are surrounded by like-minded individuals and you're brand new to something it cuts your learning curve for you because now instead of feeling like oh my goodness learning something new is going to be overwhelming I don't know if I'm going to be stop now you have a community that you can plug into Mm -hmm. you have a support system so if you get stuck listen, we'll hop on a Zoom and things like that. So surround yourself. If you have any of these inhibitions, old or young, surround yourself with a community so that you can utilize that community as a resource to help cut the learning curve for you and give you some of the encouragement. And what's the other word I'm thinking of? The stuff you need to keep going. I can't mm-hmm. think of a word though. Oh, the, the, the like the, um, Hmm. <laughs> Tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue. Yeah, now you're doing it to me. Like I know exactly what you're talking about. But yes, yeah, surround yourself too. Yeah. 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 And you know, the from the investment side, I talked about this a couple times last week. We my husband and I did a very poor job of putting money away into retirement and growing it. So at the age of 46-ish, right, a couple of years ago we got serious. So a lot of other people would be like, well, it's too late. I didn't, you know, start putting away early enough. Now I can't, I don't have, I won't ever have enough money put aside. It's never too late to start growing your income through passive income investments. Um, and also like people, I, people talk about, well, I don't, 
I don't have very much money to put aside. I can only put $50 into an investment fund and I'm 50. You have to start, right? Yep. So just start. And then there are other things you can do to make money, money on the side. If you're like myself and you're, you didn't do it early enough um, the way you should have, then I've got to take, yes, I have to take a little more money, which means I need to have that side hustle or that extra income coming in and then putting it into the retirement fund. But you just need, like Christina said, plugging into a community so that you can become educated on how to ha have it happen. Yeah. I did a TikTok this week where all we did was we just posted like how much money you need to have within certain age categories to be in the top 1% in your age group. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course at like 20, it's like 20 grand, right. It's small to be in the top 1% as far as earnings and the further you go, it gets larger. And somebody commented that, I guess I need to start buying lottery tickets. And I was like, ha right. You know, and I'm like, no, it just starts putting money aside. And she was like, well, she's like, yeah, I already actually do that, but I'm never going to get to these numbers. Yes. You can get to those numbers, but that's a mindset. Exactly. Like some of the investments that we have, um, just passive streams of income, passive investments give us dividends and those dividends help us to get to those income goals. And it's, it's, you have to do a little bit of research, right? Plug in with the right people so that you can get connected to the information that will help you speed up that process. Mm -hmm. But we've done that. We've partnered with education platforms and things like that to get the information that we needed. We've paid for education to get the information that we needed so that those fuse and twos that we're able to take out of our checks and things like that actually make a bigger difference in the long run because we know where to put those fuse and twos. Yeah. And I, you know, we don't really like to talk about specific dollar amounts and things and, right. and things that we do because, you know, it's actually none of your business, right? And it's not other people's business, what you have. So don't, like, don't recommend like putting out online, oh, I made $10,000 this month because if you did or you didn't, it has no bearing on what someone else is going to do. So it's irrelevant. It gives people some false expectations. But I do want to give you just an example of why it's not too late if you have the correct knowledge. Um, our mentor in cryptocurrency um, had told us about a place that we could park some of our crypto, mm -hmm. Okay. And when we parked it there for six months, we then got some free crypto. Well, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm trying to try to say this in a way that isn't like an actual income claim or, or giving you my stats, but let's just say I bought this certain amount of crypto. Okay. And when I got the free crypto, the free crypto drop was worth 28 times the amount of the original money I put in. And I, and I got my original, original money back day. as well. Right? right. So you can do the math on whatever simply because I followed directions. Right. Now, but past I wouldn't have known. Yeah. Aren't indicative to future right. results. Exactly. But we, we pay for the education. The education gave us that information. We followed the directions and we were able to benefit from being students and coachable. So, yeah. And like, there's no way I would have ever have known about that right without like plugging in even some of the stuff that we're in now like if it wasn't for like you and our mentor i'd still be like i trade mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah and you you just you have to i guess empty your cup yep. and let it fill back up with new information new way of looking things so it's like as far as you're too old and as far as too old to start a business we, you know, I, I, I know it does a lot of the TikTok stuff. Christina gets on Instagram. I see people of all ages on there doing stuff to make money and also just having fun as well, yeah. but also just starting up businesses. Um, I know that, you know, we do a lot of things for passive income. And one of the things that we do is we build helium hotspots across and, and place them across places, mostly in the United States. You've seen probably some of my pictures of the last shipment I've got of a box of hotspots. But let me tell you something about that hotspot business. Not only does it create passive income, but the gentleman that we work closely with, he'll be mad at me if he's watching. So I won't say his name. Right, right, right. He's in his early 70s and he just started this hotspot. Business. And he told us. Right. Like, I am 37. And he, like, he, I was, I am listening. OK, right. exactly. so you you never, never, ever think that you don't have 
a piece of information that can benefit people younger than you or older than you. Like, don't don't give yourself that barrier, right? Because everybody, and, and we said this for our team too, everybody that's in our community has something to bring to the table. They have value to offer to the community. And once you start, like the mastermind principle for us is a very big thing. Once you start surrounding yourself with more like-minded individuals, it starts to bring those characteristics out of you that you don't even know that you have sometimes. So changing your mindset is changing your your surroundings, changing your environment, changing your circle of people that you talk to on a regular basis. And that really helps you get over the hump with some of these internal negative thoughts. You think that, Christina, do you think that um, when people get started, let's just say they get started online. Well, it doesn't even have to be online. They get started in a business, whatever the age now, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're new doing whatever it is they're doing, whether it's a brick and mortar business or it's a, they're, they're going to start an online, you know, e-commerce store and do some social media posts that they get intimidated a little bit because they feel like if they're out there talking about something and they're just learning it themselves, that they feel kind of like an imposter. I do think that. And I really, really, really want people to understand that imposter syndrome is a thing. And it's a thing that you need to get over in the very beginning when I, I started my YouTube channel, I was brand new. I didn't know anything. So I told my channel, I don't know anything, but I started the channel so that you guys can come on the journey of me learning. And sometimes being open and honest like that works. And you can't be an imposter if you are honest. This is your truth. Let people know, you know what? I'm learning, I'm new. Give me tips. Because, you know, everybody's willing to, or not everybody, lots of people are willing to give you some constructive criticism on how you can do better, right? But never think that, that you're an imposter because you're brand new at something. Everything that exists today was an idea, was a thought. It was a starting point for somebody, everything. Right, and Absolutely. you can think about like, just kind of get it out of your brain that you're even new like oh I'm a new right. I'm not very good at this because if you started you already probably know something yep that's the next person doesn't know and you're the teacher already yep and just you can just kind of get if you can get that out of your head that you're not an imposter and if you have something to that you know then by all means you can teach it and by all means you can charge to teach it yep. as well no matter how new you are if you know something that somebody else doesn't know your time and your knowledge is valuable. So, um, but yeah, imposter syndrome is a, definitely a real thing. Right. You know, and just, you know, we talk, my sister talks about this a lot. We should have her on the show sometime, right? Yeah. She's, my, she's a Pip sister because she's my sister. So Christy's sister. Yeah, she's my sister. But the, her, she, she owned, was partial owner of a counseling center for a long time. And they did all kinds of personal development seminars and things. And one of the things that, that they teach is always being authentically you in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And so that when you, you're the same person, like if you meet me in person, I'm this person right here that you're talking to on the podcast, you're not going to get a different version of me. Right. Um, and I know some people have like personas and things like that, but online, but I personally believe if you want to actually build something long-term, people can smell BS real quick, yeah. right? So you get the same version of me. My family gets the same version of me. Now, does that mean that I'm going to come on and, and when I'm having a bad day, you're going to know I'm having a bad day? You might, you might, I might end up saying something, but probably not. Um, it doesn't mean that, that you, like if you travel to France, okay, let me give it, put it this way. And it's better that you can speak the French language Right. But it doesn't mean you've changed. So sometimes, yes, you're going to alter your language a little bit for your right. audience. So that's not what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, I'm going to speak French, but I'm still me. I, you know, right. Still you grow. Grow. right. You know, so there's that. But like being authentically you, if you if you've ever listened to Gary V, what do we know about Gary V? If you've listened to him, the guy likes to swear up the wazoo. I like, like him. The F -bomber, right. <laughs> and he was told in the very beginning, you can't be doing that you're never going to make it if you're, cause he's F bombing all the time. And maybe he's not your cup of tea, but let me just talk about why that's important. 
he said, look, this is how I am in the real world. Yeah. He said, so I decided, you know, he's like a tough Jersey boy, grew up with, that's just how they talk. Okay. He did not want people to meet him in person at something and be shocked because his online personality was exactly. different than his in-person personality. And so he just decided to be authentically himself at all times. Yep. Um, and so what, why is that important? Cause it's easy to be you. You don't, like, you don't have to come on and just, you know, all of a sudden you're expected to change. Your you don't have to make up something like it's easy to stay in your own shoes. Mm -hmm. They fit you. And, and people are going to grab it. People are going to gravitate to you no matter what you is. Okay. I have a, you know, how, how people say that certain food is an acquired taste. <laughs> I'm an acquired taste type personality. Like it takes some getting used to once you're used to it, you know, it's there. But I know I'm an acquired taste personality, but people actually like me. Like I'm surprised all the time. Like people enjoy conversation with me. So I'm okay with being myself because to put on a facade, it's, it exhausting. takes too much effort. Yeah, yeah. it takes too Tired. much effort. Like for me to not, I'm goofy. I like to laugh and joke. And I like to, I like to get information, share information, right? But for me to change that, I don't even know what that would look like. Like it would take effort for me to think of how to do it and then, or think of what it looks like and then think of how to execute it. So it's just easier for me to be myself, you know? It's, yeah. And it's better to share a, like a compelling story that's true than share a compelling story that has been, what's the word, exaggerated. Okay, it, it, or it you can't put makeup on a pig. Okay, right. Yeah. So you don't always have to be coming on to let's say you decide to start a business and you're going to do some stuff on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you want to talk, you know, talk to your audience a little bit. It's okay to share some of your pain and some of your struggles because they're going to relate to that way more than they're going to be like, look at all this money I made. Right. right? It helps people. Like when they see, oh, you're successful, but you struggled. How did you? And now you can open up that dialogue, right? Oh, you're successful and you have kids. How do you do it? You can open up that dialogue, right? So like I said, there's a target demographic, a target audience for everything. And yep. you're going to fall into one of those places. You're going to find your, your niche. You're going to find your target. You're going to find the person the, or the group of people that you're talking to. I did a training and I remember exactly, it's funny how you have exactly where I was sitting in my office. Cause I had moved my office around to like every bedroom in our house at that point had been in my office. I was trying mm. to find the, I remember where I was sitting I remember it felt like the whole thing is in my head and I was on a training. It was a Monday night and I told us my story in a way I had not uh, told anybody before in the business. And I mm -hmm. talked about like the physical abusive relationship I had been in. I talked about us getting to the point where our income had gone backwards and I didn't get the roommates and I, the girls and I were sleeping in one room in the same bed for a while. And I was just like, I don't even know where it came from, but I was like, I, I hadn't really planned it. Right. It just started pouring out this whole story that week I had, cause I was in direct sales. Okay. Not an MLM. I had my first five figure day. It was a double, like a, it was a more than more than normal, 10, more than 10,000. Okay. It was my first five figure day that week in sales. And I was like, I'll never forget that week because I had poured my heart out, my, my struggle and my mess and mm -hmm. been in just really, you know, I was so, I don't, like I said, I don't even know where it came from. And I, you know, I remember, you know, my friend Bill calling me up. That's the best call you've ever done. I'm like, I have no idea where that came from. I don't even know why I started talking about that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, apparently I needed to vent. Right. <laughs> I needed right. to get it out or whatever. Somebody um, needed to hear it though. Right. Somebody needed to hear it. And why does that end up equating to money later in the week? Well, it's just because 
I was raw and believable and relatable. Yeah, everything I said came from a true and, and place and from the heart. Right. You know, it was genuine mm -hmm. and it's, it's easier to, it's easier for me to shop with somebody who I believe genuinely has my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to partner with a person like that to affiliate or associate myself with someone I feel is true to themselves and other people. So just the, the whole, am I too old? Am I too young? I feel like an imposter. I don't know anything. Every, like I said, everything started out as a thought. Everything started from step one. Everybody started from the beginning, right? And whatever your beginning is, whatever your beginning looks like, there's somebody that, that you're going to be speaking to when you're going through that. So keep that in mind when, when you think it's going to be difficult, when you think it's going to be hard, when you think you can't do it, just remember that the fact that you already thought about doing it and you started is way ahead of a lot of other people. Like for it, it's for personal development, I love to listen to Les Brown. Les Brown tells this oh, story wow. of um, a, of what, what you would do if on your deathbed, all of your past ideas that you had never acted upon met you and had a conversation with you on your deathbed. Like, what does that look like? All of these great ideas that could have been however many zeros after them, ideas, all of these great ideas that could have helped other people. At the end of the day, you don't want to be on your deathbed saying, I wish I had done that. What if I had did this? I wonder how many people I could have helped if, right? So at the very least, at the very least, just start. And, and we're going to keep saying this. Don't start for like a week and think that's it. Put some effort into it. Be willing to fail. Like I is fail forward is is what what I like to say. Like for, well, who was it? I think it was Will Smith that had a conversation about failing forward. Um, Les Brown talks about falling on your back because mm -hmm. if you can see up, you can get up. Right. Be willing to fail. Be willing to be um, Thomas Edison. Please be willing to fail nine hundred and ninety nine times because it's not a failure nine hundred and ninety nine times. It's just finding out what not to do. You know, so it applies to anything where you put the word T-O-O -O in front of it. Am I to this, to this, do this? And the answer is always going to be no. It's not right. too, and you're not too, too fat, too thin, too black, too white, too young, too old, too whatever, right? Too right. broken, right? Too broken, too many kids, too many marriages, too many, like nobody wants to listen to, to much anything. It's just, yep. it's just a mindset thing where it's like, no. Just go for it. Do it. Right. Because you're not the only, you aren't the only person in that situation. And, and your enthusiasm and your ability to move forward definitely is going to resonate with somebody. And it might help them more than you understand. Trust me, like I have been that person on both sides of the fence. I didn't know when I told my story, it was going to help people and inspire mm -hmm. people. I didn't know that my mentor story was going to inspire me and give me the motivation that I needed to be successful, right? And it was, it's those two, like he had a great story, has a great story and it motivated me and I have a great story and it motivates other people. And I, did, I never would have thought like depression and talking about depression would motivate other people. You don't think about how many other people are in your situation because you feel like you're the only person going through it. And that's never the case ever the case so be willing and we're not saying spill all your beans right <laughs> no we're just saying be willing to be your authentic self be willing to be true to yourself and understand that the people who who like that are going to gravitate towards you and be very very okay with the people who don't Mm -hmm, exactly that's not the people yep. you're talking to they're not your they're, they're not your tribe and in our marketing mentor dave talks you know he he sums it up turn your mess into a message yep and yeah and not everybody's your audience it's fine right like be okay like the biggest thing i think about being an entrepreneur that you have to be okay with is not everybody cares or likes you once you get those things in your head you're fine not everybody cares what you're doing, how you're doing it, how you're doing, and be okay with that. Not everybody's going to like what you do, how you do it, or the idea, or the fact that you're starting another thing for the 50,000th time. 
you're going to have that group of people. But outside of that group of people is the rest of the world. So, you know, so I was watching this them. video on YouTube because I am working on my, my health and my weight right now. So I'm watching this video, right? Wonderful lady do, going through this. I'm not even talking about it. It's just like this health thing she's going through. It's just, she's just an average person like us. And she's kind of babbling for a while at the beginning. Okay. And so the criticism in the comments on the YouTube was skip to timestamp five minute, 28 seconds. If you want to get to the actual information and then people were like, thank you. But then other people were like, you know, you're just babbling too much. No matter what they said, she came in and, and especially on the ones where they were kind of nasty she she graciously said thank you for your comments yeah like who cares yeah, listen you are not everybody's cup of tea tea is not everybody's cup of tea think about that <laughs> right like some people genuinely hate tea if if something as innocent as tea can have a group of people that dislikes it and be completely okay with being tea you should be the same, right? right? It's you can do and do not, please do not try to get into the people pleaser mentality. Be okay with the people that don't with you, whatever the don't is, be okay with that because that's either going to give you, if you look at it the right way, it's going to be constructive criticism for you, right? Because maybe you didn't realize you were doing whatever, whatever it was, right? Right, exactly. Maybe um, it's going to help you target your, your message a little bit differently. Maybe you can figure out how you've attracted this group of people and not. <laughs> right. Okay. Like, you know how in, in business they say there's no such thing as bad publicity. I like when people comment on my posts negatively and positively because either way it goes, the algorithm said somebody yeah. types here. Especially if like a couple of people start getting into it on your yes. comments, like Are get you? into it. <laughs> lots of activity on my comments keep exactly. going unless it gets where you know the only things i delete is if people are giving out like crap coins and yeah stuff like that other than that go at it mm -hmm. and if it's like if it's social media if it's your business you control the narrative mm -hmm. like be okay with deleting people's comments i do it all the time like some stuff is just not like we've i've had some experiences where if I were not in the personal development space, I would have lost all of my like gumption to do what I was doing because people have been just that rude. But because I control the narrative, you just, you delete and you don't think about it. You don't harp on it because that's one of how many people in the world. And they, they could have just been having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Like, my thing is for people who like cut off people in traffic and stuff like that. I just think they have to pee. Right. Like they're in a hurry. So when people say negative stuff on my posts and stuff like that, it's like, I equate the same thing. Like maybe they're just, they just had a bad cup mm -hmm. of like coffee in the morning. It was like all negative tea or something. You don't so, know what people are going through in their life. Right. They could have had a really crappy day. Right. And, so, you know, I delete stuff too. And it's not necessarily because I don't want other people to see it. It's so that I don't want to read it again. Exactly. I don't want to see it again. Like that's how I just cut it out. Because if I, if I see it again, I'm going to think about it again. Exactly. Like we are human. My feelings get hurt. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to protect myself and my feelings and my mental environment, I will delete a comment. And then it's done after that. And that's the thing you have to do though. Like when you encounter that situation make sure that you finish it make sure that whenever you conclude it you delete it you remove it you're done with it's it done. yeah right and what i found is i like to comment back on a lot of people's stuff with just thank yous and congratulations and things like that because it makes me feel better so you can always yeah. combat stuff with like combat one crazy spectrum of the emotional range there with something different so if you get some negative get back some positive and you'll be fine yeah and sometimes you know like people are having a bad day or they didn't mean it the way it came off because that's what happens when people aren't hearing a voice yep because you cannot convey tone through text i don't i've had arguments about the fact that if i type to you in all caps i'm not yelling my caps lock was on Right. Okay. 
I was just in a hurry to type and my caps was on. I was not mm-hmm. yelling, especially not if it was something funny. And I have two older family members who type in all caps all the time because they said they can't see it with unless they type in all caps. I get text messages all in caps. So I know that's why they're typing caps. Right. Because they said they can't see it because their eyes are bad. Right. You never know what, what the situation is when you're reading text. So do do me a favor very early in, in this experience. Just read the words. Mm-hmm. And then understand sometimes, like Christy said, sometimes people don't mean it the way that it came out. Okay, so just be okay with that. <laughs> All right, off the soapbox, right? Right. But you know what? It's just, these are the things that we, we as human beings, we, where we self-sabotage because we have that thing where we think we're too whatever. Yep too short, too tall, whatever. I was listening to this guy um, who does interviewing for a large corporation. And he was saying that no matter what the, who he interviews and they don't get the job, he ends up hearing the feedback that they thought they were too whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever they are having an issue with, right? Like they didn't want to hire me because I'm, I'm a guy and I'm only five foot two, right? It must be that. And so, you know, we we just we put these expectations on ourselves and they're based on our own um insecurities on something yeah. you know right. about ourselves so you're never too anything to get started investing you're never too anything to start a business you're never too anything to you know improve your relationships all of it so yeah so just be you be happy and comfortable with being you and understand that not everybody's gonna like you and it's okay yeah. If you want to learn more about our community, you can always reach out to us. Um, we're, we're, we are getting the PIP sisters uh, going. Um, so we don't have like our, the PIP sisters website done and that kind of stuff yet, but you, we're, we're on all social media as the PIP sisters. Yep. You can message so us everywhere. Reach out. Um, we'll be here to help. And what are we doing next week? Next week, are we going over, um, trading yeah let's talk trading next week okay so for those of you who are interested in just one of the areas that we have additional income coming in from if you're interested in learning more next week's going to be the week for you so you'll have a, a week of just trading info content and stuff like that coming to you okay now i will say that we all believe on our team that at least one person in every household should have the skill set right. it's not for everyone I can think of people I know that this is actually not a skill set for, but at least yep. one person in your family should have this skill set. Yep. I like feel very strongly about it. So even if you don't think it's for you, tune in anyway, because it might be for somebody else in your family. Like you know, out. you might know somebody who this would be good, a good fit for. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say this in advance. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. If you don't like math, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I do not like math. I am also dyslexic, which a lot of people don't know, which means my numbers and letters transpose or they move when I'm reading or looking at them. And people don't understand that. If you have something like that going on and you are intimidated by numbers, um, I need you to tune in because this is not what I thought it was. And I'm extremely Mm -hmm. happy that I did dive in because like in order for you to fix a weak muscle you got to flex it right and and this actually helped me do that and I'm I was able to see or am still able to see a good amount of success inside of what we do although like I said dyslexic and I'm not good at math yeah and it's there's there's only a little bit of math it's really not really about math and the things that you have to do that have math involved calculator And most of it's like the tools that we use, the numbers are already on it. You just kind of have to know what numbers to look at. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, what are those little puzzles where you do the numbers to connect the dot puzzles? It's like that. that. So for those of you who are interested in knowing more about what we do inside of the trading space, um, inside of one of the education platforms that we partner with, next week is going to be for you. But that's going to wrap us up today. You got any closing words, Christy, for the week? No, just have an awesome weekend. And today, 
check your Pips for Brunch newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go to pipsforbrunch.com. Um, I shared the number one tool that I think is like so important to have the last two decades. And then um, tomorrow we're going to elaborate on that. So, you know, if you're not subscribed, we're giving you a lot of information in those um, in the newsletter with different tips and strategies and things that, you know, the thing that I shared today, it saved me so many times in the industry, in the home business industry. So you definitely want to check out, check your email or get subscribed so you don't miss another email. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Make sure that you understand everything that's in the newsletter is not everything that's on the show. That's where some additional heat is at. Okay. But that's going to wrap us up for today. You guys have a phenomenal weekend. We will see you guys here on Monday. The newsletter for today is going to drop tomorrow for you so that you have access to that. Check us out on all of our social medias. We are the Pip Sisters everywhere. Um, But bye. Bye, everybody.